Hi everyone, my name is Les with Meta AI, and today we're going to talk about uh, using checkpoint activations with FSTP, or fully sharded data parallel. Um, so I've got a notebook set up here to show you how to do that, and uh, starting with the first cell up here, um, initial requirement of course is um, a version of PyTorch that supports activation checkpointing specifically for FSTP, and that actually happened currently with the June 18th nightlies, so anything June 18th and beyond uh, will be sufficient. So you go ahead and uh, just bring that in. You see we're using June 18th. Uh, we'll need two basic imports, Torch itself, of course, uh, but we'll also need Funk Tools uh, Partial because we're going to do a little bit of function currying. And we've got our main FSTP imports, so standard items there. And now we'll get into the, actually sort of the core uh, code that we need here for checkpoint wrapping. Uh, there are three items we're bringing in. The checkpoint wrapper itself, which is what will literally wrap uh, the layers that we're going to checkpoint with, um, or checkpoint. The checkpoint impl, which is an enum, there's currently two options there, and we're just going to use the most performant one. Um, and then finally, the function for applying uh, the checkpoint wrappers. So that will uh, run through your model and uh, checkpoint at the appropriate layers for you. So that will bring us to the next question, which is what layers should you be checkpointing? Um, <clears throat> Obviously, if you're a model builder directly, you can probably have a good intuition of, of how to do that. Uh, but we do have an automatic function, and it's very similar to the transformer wrapper um, function. Uh, so if you haven't seen this tutorial, this will be helpful for you to identify how to pick out which layer class you want to use. But generically, we want to use the layer classes of a given transformer. Um, so in this case, uh, we'll just pretend we're using the deep fit from Vit PyTorch. And so in that case, the layer class is the residual. So we're bringing that in here. And then from there, we need to make a Lambda function. And this is a check function that's going to basically, as we walk through the model uh, programmatically, we want to identify if this is the right layer class that we want to checkpoint wrap. So it's a very straightforward uh, thing here. So we've got uh, residual we brought in from the, the transformer class or transformer model, uh, and then we're going to just identify that. So this is your check function there. So that's the first thing we need. <coughs> Excuse me. After that, this is fairly boilerplate code at this point, uh, but it's basically saying checkpoint wrapper. Uh, we're not going to offload a CPU, uh, and we are going to use a non reentrant form. Uh, this is back to that enum that I mentioned. Uh, the non reentrant is the best performance, so that's what we're going to stick to. Uh, oops. And then from there, uh, the key last step before you actually checkpoint wrap is to make sure that you have actually already initialized FSTP and basically sharded your model. Um, so this would be an example here where we've got our model set up. Uh, we have the wrapping policy, mix precision policy, and the other things uh, that will then present our sharded model, take the sharded model, and that's what we want to pass to the apply activation checkpoint wrapper function. So bringing in our model. Our checkpoint wrapper uh, that we built up above and our check function to identify what layers we want to do or to checkpoint wrap and that's actually it um, once you apply this it will actually loop through uh, apply the checkpoint wrapping to your model and you are ready to go um, you can print the model and you'll see within that the appropriate breakout uh, between um, the sharding as well as the checkpoint wrapping um, best practices <coughs> excuse me um, there's really two trade-offs or, or one main trade-off you will should expect to see a roughly 20 to 25 percent slowdown in your training time that's because you're uh, effectively doing a double compute uh, both in the forward pass and then redundantly doing some compute in the backward pass but in exchange you are freeing up uh, from what i've seen with uh, t5 and some other models uh, anywhere from 33 to 38 percent gpu memory so you can combine that uh, by leveraging the freed up memory by increasing your batch size and of course that increased batch size greatly increases your total training throughput and uh, seen increases uh, on the order of two, three X plus in terms of total throughput and uh, therefore total training time improvements in training time. So it's a very significant tool in your tool chest for improving your training uh, time and experience uh, with FSTP. So hope that helps.